Here we go. All right, it's time for the Wrestling Perspective Podcast. That to the next to me is Lars Fredrickson from the iconic band Rancid. You may know him from other podcasts such as the Wrestling Perspective Podcast. What's going on, buddy? Oh, just uh, hanging out in San Francisco on a cold November afternoon. I hate you. Waiting, it's to, waiting, waiting, waiting to talk to Thunder for like weeks now. She yeah. kept like dissing us. Yeah. We're you know not I mean? cool. No, I was not dissing you. I, I honestly thought, I honestly thought, hi guys, I'm Thunder Rosa. Yeah. <laughs> He's a no FX fan. That's why. <laughs> no, I'm no, in the close. Bay Area. You know, I told I know. you I was going to, I went to the Bay Area and, uh, and I was like, man, I, I wish I would have met you there. We would have dinner, you know. I gained like five pounds when I went out there. So much bread and the the food. I will have to say some of the best food in the country is in the Bay Area. I My notice I don't get the same come. invite when you come to Michigan. What's what's up with that? Well, I, I mean, Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't go to Michigan. You're smart. Trust me. Yeah. No, Thunder, I'm just playing with you. Um, I'm sorry we didn't see each other when you were in California. But let me ask you a quick question before we get into the wrestling part of it. Yeah. You said you ate a lot, a, a lot of bread. I'm assuming it was the San Francisco sourdough. Uh, no, it wasn't sourdough only. I went to, oh. I did like a little tour because a person I went with, that person was never been in San Francisco. So mm-hmm. we literally walked, I don't even, maybe like 35 miles the last, in two, day, in two days. Yeah. Yeah. And every every hour, I was like, oh, I'm tired. Because at the time, I was like, I, was, I think this is when I had my first epidural. So I was tired. So I'll go to a restaurant and I'll sit and have coffee or uh-huh. have like Italian food or like, oh, uh-huh. bread, cheese bread. But yeah, we had some sourdough. That was good. Nice. Well, did you, did you food- part? Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I, I'm tr- I'm still trying to talk to her about food, bro. Oh, go, go ahead. Because I, I want to know, like, did she have the Mexican? Did you go to a taqueria while you were here? I think, listen, man, the week before I did a taco festival in Fresno, the last thing oh, I wanted okay. to eat was Mexican food. Well, yes, got... That's crazy. That's crazy talk right there. It's like, <laughs> I've never actually ever heard anybody ever say that in my entire, I'm born and raised in California and uh, I've never, ever heard anybody in my entire life say the last thing I want is a taco. No, look- well, Lars, think about it. I was a judge for a taco festival. I probably ate like 25 Bro, tacos. listen, you don't want to be that judge? <laughs> Call me up. You got the number. Say, I got the guy well, for you. It was brutal. It was brutal. It was, br- I've been a judge before, but for this, for some reason, this taco festival was brutal. It was delicious, but I know what it was because we have like birria tacos 10 times in a row. So by the taco number five, I was like, I can't taste the, I can't taste the meat, I can't taste the flavors. So it was, it was really hard for me to judge. So gotcha. taco fifteen, I'm like having the hot sweats. I don't know if you guys ever had hot sweats when you eat so oh, yeah. much and you know you're yeah. not supposed to be eating. I'm like sweating, and I'm not only my like my forehead is sweating, other things are sweating too. And I had to like head to the bathroom, and I was like, all right, I can, I can keep going. I right, let me ask this. you, let me ask you one question though. Are you are you eating the whole taco? Or is it just a bite and then you're going to the next? No. Well, you know, I was like, she cheated. I'm not going to eat all day. I'm not going to eat all day. So the first oh. two tacos were, were small. And so I like, I was so hungry and I knew it was a mistake. <laughs> so I shoved like two tacos and then they keep bringing these tacos and the tacos are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So I told you by, by taco 15, I was tacoed out I was and I had another 10 to eat. So I was like, <laughs> oh. That's it was incre- incredibly hard. I mean, for those who say that, you know, being a a judge in a, any food festival is easy, is not. Like, if you really have to, like, pace yourself, um, some of the food is not as good as you think it is. It's not. So you got to be very polite and eat it. And if you don't, well, they, they know. Well, hey, after Thunder Rosa, Guy Fieri is coming on to talk wrestling with us. So we cannot <laughs> wait. So this is, but uh, Thunder, I know you know this, but this is a very special day in our podcast uh, history. Lars forgets anniversaries. So I just want to say happy anniversary. Two years ago to this day, you joined the podcast. Well, I'm super happy to be here. I mean, we've Stop done nothing, lying. but okay. I'm not very happy to be here. The only reason why I'm here is I wanted to talk tacos with Thunder Rosa. Happy Straight birthday, up. though. Today is Dennis's birthday. So happy Thank birthday, you. Dennis. Happy birthday, Dennis. Thank but, you. Uh, you know, 
I, I'm really excited here because obviously a Thunder Rosa fan, been wanting to get her on for a long time. I don't feel like we get as many women as we would like to get onto the show. And I feel like we got pretty much, in my opinion, probably the number one female wrestler in the world today. And she's sat right there and she's talking to us. So with that, I'm going to leave it off to you, Dennis, and you kick off the show. Uh, first and foremost, I want to ask, how how are you doing? You alluded to the upper door a little bit earlier. I know you've talked a little bit in the past about you're aiming for January, but maybe, maybe not. Uh, I know you're not going to like break any news on this podcast on when you're coming back, but just how are you doing? How is injury progressing? And we won't really push you on when do you come back? Uh, well, this that's a question that everybody asks me, so don't feel bad about it. I always ask that. In Espanol, yesterday, probably like 50,000 times, which is okay, everybody. I mean, you want to wonder and you want to know when you're one of your favorite wrestlers, the number three in the world. Let me just put a little Ooh. cream on my tacos. Uh, it's coming back to TV. Um, well, I'm doing really well. Uh, this week, uh, we, we did some good progress. Uh, I started running for the first time in four months wow. or was it three, four, four? It's August, September, October, November. Yeah, almost three months. Let's say three months. Um, so the physical activity is is, is getting a little bit bigger, and like it's, uh, I am allowed to do a lot more stuff than before. I'm not allowed to lift yet. I'm not allowed to do a lot of stuff. I'm not allowed to wrestle uh, still. So, but we're we're making progress. Just the fact that I can actually jog, jog for seven minutes on on and off. It's for me, it's huge. I because I have not been able to do that. Ha follow up real quick. Have you talked to anybody else that has uh, gone through what you're gone through to see if you're kind of on track, off track, where you are? Yes. Compared to everybody else. Yes, I have. I have spoke to other patients that have sim similar uh, injuries that I have in the place that I go to. And for a lot of us, you know, everybody's different. It's hit and miss. Uh, when you were talking about a lower back injury, it's always uh, you have to be very careful because you can re-injure it again is your back. So you, you utilize your back for everything. So I'm really hopeful that uh, things will continue to progress the way that they are. And we're taking our time and we're taking all the measures that I need to take to uh, stay safe. Like I said, I'm, I'm really thankful that um, I'm allowed to go and do signing still. Uh, but I have to, again, be very careful because my back can get irritated really easily. And I don't want to get a, a, a huge setback that is going to, you know, take me from like, just doing the basic stuff, cleaning my house, you know, taking care, like walking my dog and all that stuff. Cause it just, it's, it's, you can really re, like re-injure yourself, but, um, I still don't have like a set time yet. And, um, but again, I'm, I'm working really hard to get, to get better, uh, physically and mentally because mentally like injuries can take a toll. So, uh, but I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm really happy that I can do that. I shared that with my family yesterday. They're all excited. And the fact that I can do more physical activity to me is huge because when that is taken away from you and, and you are forced to be sitting at home, forced to be chilling, I, I, I can't, I'm just like cooking like, like a maniac. That's why I gained like 25 pounds. Uh, it's hard. It's hard on, on any, you know, athlete. And, uh, but I'm really excited that uh, I know when I come back, I'm going to come back a lot stronger in many aspects than, than when I left before. Well, you know, you said that you're a physical person and you need to be active. And I know that with my back injuries and back surgery, when I was for the first time, when I was 29, it's a pain in the ass. And you, you know, and I feel like, you know, being the world champion at the time that you got injured, there was probably a lot of expectation for you. And uh, how much pressure do you put on yourself? you know, just as a human being, like for you to get better? I mean, how much do you like, cause I'm always been curious about that aspect of it being, you know, in using your body for your profession. And I know, I know other wrestlers who have been injured in, in, in the similar situations. Do you put in your pressure, any pressure on yourself to get back to work? I do, but uh, they had to humble me a couple of times. My, my doctors and my physical therapist, they were like, if you keep doing, or if you think if you keep doing what you're doing, you're not going to get better. You're just going to hurt yourself, you know, and you have to accept that there's a timeline for a reason because right. we want, we don't want you to have surgery because once you have surgery, you know, things are, you know, recovery is going to be longer. Um, 
things are not going to be the same. Re-injury is pretty high. And um, you have to you have to sit down and listen. And for me, I think that had that talk, it really it really pissed me off because I'm like, no, this is moral. You shouldn't be that way. And I, I want to do this, and I want to do that, and 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 just like on top of everything that is happening, right, with the injury, um, you know, there's you just have to accept that you have to take a step back and and let your body heal so I had to accept that I will gain weight because I'm not allowed to exercise I have to accept that um I have to be gentle with my body and for so long like you said I utilize my body to make a living and I am not utilizing my body to take a living I'm not taking that uh, adrenaline rush in it's it's that you got to replace that with something else and that I think that's one of the hardest and most difficult things uh, I was doing busted open with Tony Dreamer, and I remember he asked me, I was like, are you okay? Because I kept moving and moving and moving, and it's like, no, I'm not okay, because my back was hurting when I was doing the show, and he was like, well, Melissa, this is this is like a drug, and you're, you know, wrestling can destroy you completely, so you got to chill. I can tell you that because I, I wrestle with a broken neck and, and a broken back, and that's not fun, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I don't want to get to that point. Lars Breheard is back carrying me many weeks on this podcast. So uh, thoughts and prayers go out to Lars as his recovery continues. But, uh... you know, because th those those <laughs> thoughts and prayers really, really work. You know, <laughs> they change everything. You know what I mean? I just give me more thoughts and prayers. And that's why yeah. he's here today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, you know, talking about busted open a little bit and, and you not wrestling, does it make you focus on uh, growing other skill sets? Because, you know, everybody's bump card is limited. You never know when your last match is going to be. A lot of wrestlers don't really have a second skill set outside of that squared circle. You're one of the few that are, are a great talker. You're on the second best wrestling show on earth. <laughs> behind us i mean you know we're the we first can it. we can we're find the out but you're hurt we're the yeah. first i'll well, fight I you mean... i'll fight you as soon as they clear me oh boo you but... know I... <laughs> she'll fight you she'll fight you at the at the at the taco eating contest oh yes yeah, until boy. you get the, the shit guy and he's coming out now i'm like yeah, yeah. <laughs> But uh, but now the the you know because like I said you're 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 on busted open huge massive radio show an opportunity not many people get so to be thought of into that spot is a an honor but you know uh, other opportunities other skill sets outside of it now that you know you're going through an injury you realize that you may not be doing this forever yeah of course I think I mean think about it just think about it it's like for the last. 10 years, nine, 10 years, I've been doing one thing and one thing only as traveling, wrestling, being on TV, being in small shows. And it was all for a short amount of time in the grand scheme of things, put in pause. So you start thinking, oh man, like I have to have a plan B and C to make a living, right? So um, like I said, I've been doing a lot of digging. I've been doing a lot of thinking and we've been doing a lot of uh, taking action and, and things that, you know, I put on the back burner uh and and now we're you know making making it happen uh with the time that i have and thankfully everything like now we're doing now is do through zoom so i'm taking classes i am i'm learning new skills uh i'm definitely talking to other people networking in in a lot of community uh activities that i've been doing in, in san antonio here in san diego and by national in tijuana it's is bringing me to, to another, I'm, I'm leveling up in a way um, because I'm, I'm thinking about business. I'm thinking about things that I can do that are not necessarily in the entertainment or could be related to entertainment too. So uh, it's been incredibly eye-opening and um, it, it really made me realize the kind of person that I had become and the person that I always been, but I kind of like forgot who I was and I'm in and for a moment because I forgot uh, after you become Thunder Rosa or after you become that wrestling character, who I was before I became the character. And um, and I'm really working on 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 nurturing that person, which is Melissa. And um, it's been beautiful. It's been, I met a lot of community activists in, in, in the state of Texas. Uh, I, I, you know, get the, I got their numbers. I met a lot of uh, Latinos that are 
entrepreneurs that, that have started their own businesses and I have talked to them and, you know, uh, and see if I can, I mean, if I can start doing some stuff with marketing, with, you know, I, I told you, I, I, I think I mentioned this before in another podcast, I, I, I am taking singing classes. I always wanted to sing. So I'm releasing my first song in the next month. So we're getting on the studio in December. Uh, and I'm just putting all the work, man, because there's a lot of stuff that I always wanted to do. And I, I put it on the back burner. But now with time and I know managing myself when I return, it's, it can be possible. So I'm, I'm excited for the future for, for Thunder Rosa and for Melissa, too. You know, when you, when you became champion, you know, and being put up to the top of your profession, because that's kind of what that means, you know, you're, you're the best out there and the company's obviously, you know, putting you out there because you're, you're, you represent the best. Did you feel like um, anything changed when you became champion? Do you feel like the locker room changed for you or the way that you viewed wrestling changed for you or, you know, how you went in and wrestled a match changed for you? Did, did anything significantly change for you? Absolutely. Everything changes because the stakes are a lot higher. Um, and there are certain things that, um, again, you don't have uh, power over it and you have to go and, and, and do your job. Right. And um, you just have to roll with the punches and really learn what you can and you cannot do. And what you can do, you do it. And what you cannot do, you got to manage yourself and, and do the best you can. So um, being a champion of any company is, it, it's a very, uh, it's an honor, but it's also a very difficult task because all the eyes are on you. And that includes not only in the company, but it includes outside. So you're always being scrutinized for everything. And, um, and that can be very detrimental for, you know, for your psyche sometimes when things are not going the way that you want to, or, uh, or you had other expectations. So I think, um, Again, with everything that has happened to me, I, I really have come to a conclusion that I have to surrender certain things and I have to keep my head high and keep going because I know who I am and, and I know the type of uh, champion that I represent, not only for, you know, for my family, for, for the company, but also for the world. And, and for me, it has been an honor in, in, in the fact that I have been recognized in, in places that I thought I never would. Um, it's, it's huge. And... Um, and I'm really, I'm, I'm really happy about that. But you know, that things were perfect. No, they were not perfect. But again, I, I'm learning a lot, and I'm, and I will continue to learn. And um, and I hope when I come back, like that, that things will, will be better, and I will be a better person, and I will continue to, uh, support the company the way that I had, and 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 just be even more positive, uh, than I was before. I think that's very, very important because sometimes we get in a rut and 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 we we get stuck in in things that we can't change and and that's a very dangerous place to be. You, I kind of speaking on that, and uh, one of the things Lars and I have talked about when we bring you up on the show from time to time is how you have risen above a, a lot of stuff. It seems like you are a favorite target of whether it's a dirt sheet or other wrestlers to to be slandered and you never unravel, you never uh, flinch and you don't really, uh, I guess, kowtow to it where you, you get into an online, online slap fight with other wrestlers and you, it's a skill we don't see in a lot of wrestlers nowadays. Is, is that something that was taught to you or, you know, where did you learn that skill? Because I don't think that's just something people know how to do but yet you do it with like this class and grace that you don't get credit for when people come after you. Oh, that's a uh, Lars guys. This is a very excellent question. <laughs> and honestly, every day I ask myself, wow. Like, <laughs> um, I guess that I've been doing a lot of uh, thinking and I've been doing a lot of researching and I feel that uh, certain people in in on top positions, and like me being the first Latina Mexican-born wrestler to be in this position in the history of professional wrestling, of course there's gonna be a lot of 
you know, um, opposition. And um, it, it is important that I maintain my ground because, like I was saying, um, being the being the first of first of first, you will be scrutinized. You will be questioned. You will be, you know, I, I guess people want you to shake and, and, and people want you to fail. But the purpose in my life is bigger than uh, bickering on Twitter and or or trying to defend myself. I know who I am, my family, my friends, and those who have empowered me to be in the position that I am, they know who I am. Mistakes are being made, that's completely true. And I just have to keep moving forward because if I continue to fight and continue to do this, it, it's just gonna affect my, my self-esteem, it's gonna affect my family, and it's gonna affect what I've been working on very hard in the last 10 years, and that is like to bring representation to a, uh, a business who for so long didn't have the representation and yes, I'm going to take a lot of punches and you, yeah, I will sometimes when, when you're in the heat of, of the moment, you want to say a bunch of stuff, but for what, what's the reason that's going to uh, defeat the purpose. And like, again, it's like you, you have to take accountability of your actions or what you've done and what you haven't done and, and, and move on. If you, some people can't move on from that, that's on them, you know? And, uh, it is so interesting that you bring that up because I, I just saw something on a dirt sheet, you know, and um, I never said anything about this person, but this person has been, you know, bashing me for two years now. And it's, it's, it's a pretty incredible, right, that I, I see it. But I honestly, when I see it now, I want to make an invitation to that person to like, you know, at, like give them the olive branch and just be like, like just let, let's cut it. Like we are here to empower women, not to like, tear each other up and I'm I'm here to like really empower women and I'm just not saying it just to say it. It's, it's it is important that we help each other, you know, out and, and, and put our put our differences aside. Yeah, you know, I feel like if you're doing anything important in your life, there's always gonna be a certain stack that's gonna not like you for it. Right. So and I think now whether it's music and or art of any kind, you know, even pro wrestling. And now with the, 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 you know, social media being such a big part and, you know, workers placating to the, to fans or whatever it is um, through uh, social media or even companies placating to the opinions of people on social media. Um, you know, that's obviously changed the business in a, dra a dramatic fashion. So from the time that you got in 10 years ago, 11 years ago, to the time now, you've probably seen it change pretty significantly. Oh, yeah, huge. Um, in many aspects, uh, I've seen, you know, many people come and go, uh, trends come and go. But I feel that um, a lot of people are giving, people have done some pretty crazy things and they're giving second chances. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this this business is very interesting. Very, very interesting. So, uh like I said, if we're talking about me personally, I, you know, I, I've been criticized my whole entire career at a different level. And, and now when we're coming into a new era of women's wrestling, like, you know, everybody wants the spot. Everybody wants the spotlight. Everybody wants to be on top. And uh, for me, yes, I love being, I love being in the spot that I am. I love uh, the fact that I was recognized after t uh, almost 10 years of wrestling as uh, number three in the world. Um, that is like in my head and I'm mentioning every five minutes. No, because I can I remember next year, I might not be number three because of my injury and because of the lack of, you know, activity in, in the wrestling business. But I think it is important for women that come to this business to realize that it is important to leave a legacy of support. And it's important to leave a legacy of empowerment and uh, the money will come and, and, and people will, if, if people that can see it, the money will come. And it is important to really check on each other and 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 really help each other to succeed because if they succeed, you succeed. And I can right. I cannot tell you like so many girls that came to Mission Pro Wrestling that that's a, a wrestling show that I own and I've been running for three three years now. And so many young women have come and we have extended a hand and and helping them to get to the next level because we don't want them to stay with us forever. We want them to be successful. And, and when I see them on TV or I see them in a show or 
or getting signed somewhere, it, it gives me so much joy that they will become stars, that they have an opportunity. And that for me, that's the legacy that I want to leave. Can you talk about uh, becoming champion? Because uh, one of the famous P.D. Williams questions on this podcast, which I like to steal from him now that he's no longer here, went to the big uh, corporation in the sky, New York. Uh, we, 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 you know, when you became oh. – you like that one, didn't you, Lars? Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, when, when you became champion, when did you find out? How did they tell you? And, you know, a lot of emotions in wrestling are manufactured – so every time we hear a story of like you, they're in the ring and they're crying, it's tears of joy or that emotion is real. Uh, it kind of makes me giddy because it makes me feel like, all right, this guy, this person loves wrestling. Can, can you talk a little bit about uh, when you found out and what your reaction was? Well, uh, I don't even know how it happened, how it happened. It's just, you know, when I, when I figured that I was the next in line and it was actually going to happen. I was in a restaurant and it wasn't like, I didn't know. And they sent me, they sent me a graphic and I'm like, wait, what? Like they, they, they gotta be fucking kidding me. That's what I said. Like this, this shit is not real. Cause I was just talking to uh, one of my peers we're, we're having dinner. I think it was in Orlando. We're having dinner in Orlando. And I just started bursting out like crying. And I'm like, remember like my life and the life around in the, my life, my life and the life uh, of people around me are going to change forever. Like forever. Like I was like, I've been working for this for a long time. I said, I'm going to be able to take care of my parents. Now I'm going to be able to, to reach out to those girls that I've been trying to reach out. Like this is gonna take me to the next level. And, and everything just happened so fast because, um, Tony was really open for suggestions on how to do this in, I didn't even know it was going to be in San Antonio. And it was like, he, it couldn't be more perfect because again, I can't, it happened in San Antonio and in the ring that happened, it was my ring actually, the ring that I use for my shows. So uh, I, I bled in my own ring. So it's very special. I'm probably never going to sell it. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. um, yeah, it, it happened in the same place that I had my first and only MMA fight at uh, the Coliseum in San Antonio. That was like the rebirth of Thunder Rosa. Um, and it was, again, kind of like the graduation of everything that I've done in professional wrestling. It happened that night. And um, and it only not only happened for me, but I think it, it happened for a lot of people because it just, even to this date, I still have people that come to uh, the signings and they tell me that they cry with me. When when I came out on the entrance, when the the mariachi music hit, because they knew, I mean, that right there they knew that the change was gonna happen. And but the 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 realization of a Latina coming into a American TV show and representing herself the way that she is, raw, uncut, and and you know, wearing her heart on her sleeve was. It was really amazing. And the fact that my family, my father, my sister, my son, my partner at the time were there and they were all part of this. And I, and a tribe of people that have helped me get to where I got, it was amazing. And I can tell you, like, um, I'm never going to forget. I, I felt like the biggest superstar in the world. The, the roar of the people was incredible. Like the the pamphlets, the love that you you felt probably when you were watching it through the TV, it's incredible. Like the look that I had and I looked at everything walking on that um on that hallway was was pretty intense. And when the match was finally over and I started crying and Dustin came out, it, it was that was it. Like that man right there, he was with me from moment one when I came as a non signed talent, and he continues to be on my side as as a mentor until now. Even when I when I got hurt, you know. But um, it was people don't understand when when you're never you 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 work so hard and and nothing was handed to you, and and then all of a sudden you are about to like hit stardom 
and and you still feel like you're the the girl that's right next door and right next door girl and and, and you can't believe it you know and uh, and now i can tell you like with all the accolades that i've been able to to receive i, I now i'm able to sit down and really see all the work that i've done and see that i deserve the championship and i and i deserve everything that is given to me because i work very very hard and and i'm here to represent and continue to make a change and be a trailblazer and I, when i wanted to cry again it was just it was beautiful. It was one of the most beautiful moments in my career and in my life. Well, I've got a two part question. Since yeah. you've been for first part is, are you still watching, you know, the, the TV and stuff like that since you've been injured? Or is it harder for you? Um, and then after you answer that question, I'll answer, I ask my second part of that question. Well, one, I have to watch wrestling because I work in a busted open. <laughs> So I have to be up to date with every single yeah, show. Yeah, but you know, like you can have a pro wrestling show and not watch pro wrestling. I mean, Man. sometimes I mean, I mean, the good ones it's hard. they do. Yeah, it's, uh, the good it's ones rough. they do. Yeah. It's rough to watch it sometimes because I'm like, man, I should be there, man. It is, but it's like, okay, I gotta watch this for to study, right? So I right. take notes and and I watch as much as I can. And I watch it with my son. My son is like the most, the biggest critic, seventeen year old kid. He like says things that I don't even I don't even pay attention. But you know, seventeen year olds that are TikTokers that uh, are into all that stuff, they have another vision of how things should be done and and what's oh, yeah. popular. So it really helps me to have another perspective. He's a I love it. He's a wrestling purist. But um, <laughs> good. good. So what what's your second question? Okay, so we've seen a lot of changes in all companies. Your company, a lot of drama, and then you go over to the WWE. And we're going to mention them here. A lot of drama, right? The landscape of what we knew as wrestling from, let's say, five months ago completely changed. You know what I mean? So it's different scenarios, different situations there. But, you know, does does any of that concern you, like going back to work? Like, you know, the idea that it might not be the place that you left it? I cannot get anxious about it because if I, I don't have no control over it. I only can only work on what I can for myself. So I can be ready when I come back for anything, you know? Uh, and uh, that's what I'm working on. Honestly, if I com I'm completely honest, I'm working on getting, you know, physically and mentally ready to come back to whatever it is that this new landscape looks like. And just be ready to tackle on everything. X, Y, and Z. You know, I, I want to circle back to when you were talking about being the first Latino champion. And do you think there's a lot of unfair criticism that lands upon you for being the first? Or do you think the criticism just comes with, I'm the champion, every other champion gets the same amount uh, that I'm getting right now? Nah, I don't know, man. I mean, there's days that I... I I don't use Twitter, just FYI. I have uh, my media guy Tony Allen. He uses he's the one who manages my Twitter. He's been managing for months. I've been slipping uh, in your DMs. That's why you haven't responded. Never yes, mind. There now. you go. So <laughs> I, I did that on purpose because there are certain platforms that are very toxic, and people believe what is being put out there, even if it's the more the most far fetched thing from from being true. And I mean. You can go on my YouTube and I can exp I have explained everything with my injury and everything and people still going at it and going at it, which is fine. People will do that. I am, except I'm not going to explain myself in that aspect. But going back to your question, um, I think in history, and I'm just not talking about in wrestling, but in, in Hollywood, in radio, on everything, uh, a lot of the people that have, you know, made it to the top that are not necessarily from the mainstream or for from from that specific group they get scrutinized more um don't ask me why it's 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 something that has happened and it's and it has it's it's not kind of like normal i have listened to a lot of um i listen to this podcast this latina to latina podcast and there's been so many latinas that are working in corporate that have worked in many different aspects of you know tv corporate uh oh my god education you name it a lot of them have gone through the same experiences that i've been through 
a lot of same criticisms that I've been through, not to the level of, you know, Twitter and then they almost cancel you, but pretty severe to the point where the questioning, should they continue to do what they're doing, right? So uh, as, as, as the first of the first of the first, I have to remember that uh, this is going to happen. That is okay. No, it's not okay. But it will continue to happen. And and it's again, how are you going to rise above it? How are you going to continue to move forward? Um, and and that's what I'm I'm learning how to do. I'm learning how to uh, become a better person, and just to uh, and and just to again show that people like me can be can be accepted, and people like me, and, and it's okay being like me. There's nothing wrong. Um, and and that I'm very passionate about what I do, but I'm also very educated about what I do and, and, and what rights do I have and, and, and what, what I'm doing. So um, that, I'm telling you, that question has like 50,000 layers. I can go very political, but I'm not gonna go political. So again, people are gonna do what they wanna do and say what they wanna say. I have no control over that. The only thing that I have control over is how I'm going to react to it and how I'm going to move forward and uh, how I'm going to control my emotions. Because I think uh, a lot of people are expecting me to go completely crazy and I'm not. No, nope. well, that's, that's why they're fucking even more pissed. You know what I mean? So um, I'm a Busted Open fan. I've been part of the nation for a very long time. And Glad I interview you, this is weird. Yeah, this I is know. weird that Isn't now weird? you're interviewing me, yes. <laughs> So I got way better questions than you did anyway. But um, <laughs> oh, oh, shots fired. Wow. Damn, Lars. I'm not just saying that. But no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, you're not. <laughs> he is not. No. He is on fire. I knew no. I knew he was going to be like this, bro. I was no, ready. I was come ready. on. Come on. I'll take care of you. You know that. So know. My, question to, my question to you is working with Dave LaGreca in a ring. That must have been a fucking hard night of work. Oh, he was and, heavy. And, 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 and don't sugarcoat it. Just tell me how much. Because, I mean, that guy, I saw him. Come on. If you've seen the videos of him wrestling, you know that that's, that's a lot of hard work. So give it to me straight, Thunder. Because, you know, you we both have really good relationships with him. And we both love him. Which means okay. we both can talk shit. So talk some shit. Dave, Dave, know, and he told me I can't wrestle. He actually came two days before the show, so I can teach him how to bump, like a face bump and stuff like that. I have there's videos. I have uh, pictures. It was it, it was the process was very beautiful because I wanted to show him that if he wanted to get in the ring, that he needed to learn and he needed to experience the pain. So he did. He, we had him run the ropes. My son was teaching him how to run the ropes. Uh, it was a whole community and like he ate shit so many times <laughs> then when he came out that day um it was pretty cool i mean i beat the shit out of him <laughs> because he asked me to and it was a lot of fun like honestly working with him was a lot of fun because you know when people are so new and they're so scared they get so stiff he yeah. was like legit like like rigor mortis like, he was just, <laughs> like he's still alive so what, what was he, he was, like again? Can you show us that one more time? Oh. <laughs> he he was he was a doll. He he was down to get down and dirty. He I think um I remember he told me like you're making my one of my dreams come true with us actually getting into the ring. I mean he's been a wrestling fan for forty years. He was saying like he went around this morning, and and the vato was getting in the in the ring with like when I was in like badass shape like I was training boxing and MMA at the time so I remember giving him some punches on the side and I see some of the pictures of my like I was super ripped I was like I looked like I was gonna whip his ass if he let me uh, but uh, I did enough damage and um, he said that he I don't think he ever experienced so much pain on his chest his I think I opened his chest from the chops and man it's been it's been such an honor to work with him yeah she, I mean of course if you want me to tell you oh, no he was great in the ring no he was not like he can't wrestle <laughs> So, but we took care of him. He's, he's, he's a, he's a team player. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. I'm glad you asked that because my next question was going to be a Dave LaGreco question, even though he doesn't answer my messages in Facebook messenger, by the way, Dave, if you watch this, you know, feel free to reply. He probably, he probably doesn't know how. 
<laughs> I will. I will tell him that you that you you send a message because I'm gonna see him tomorrow. Oh, thank you. Oh, but cool. you, when we had him on, one of the things once again, Lars and I talked about was your friendship with him and how poetic and 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 amazing seeing it play out in social media was for all of us fans to to see how you guys go from you know acquaintances to best friends to you're hanging out with his wife in his bed. And it was so endearing, and, and it made me become more of a fan of you watching mm -hmm. your friendship with him grow. Uh, can you talk a little bit about, like, how did you and Dave, like, really start to blossom this friendship? Because I I, I don't want to get too much in the weeds, but I guess being a woman in wrestling, you feel like every guy that approaches you is trying to make out with you. And your your guard has to be up twenty four seven whenever anybody comes to you to ask you for anything. Uh with him, I always knew that it was professional because he's uh, one of the few people that uh, when I was starting, he wanted to have me his show so people knew about me. Then he drove. We were talking, corresponding for a while, and I, I'm uh, I was part of a group, um, the Nation, before I you know became part of a uh, busted open. Um, he came during COVID to meet me after we were, you know, corresponding and stuff. He came with his daughter and, um, and I don't know, we just became really, really good friends and, and we like correspond with him. Like, and then I met his wife and they took me in and it's, it's, it's really hard to find friends like that because he's a very genuine person. Like he's one of the very few people that calls me every week and texts me every other day to see how I'm doing, to see how my family is doing. And and he's very supportive. He's been like, you know, Gabby can tell you the same. Uh, Mark can tell you the same. And and he's a very loyal, loyal friend. So uh, he's never been inappropriate. And then I noticed that right away. And because he can't, you know, he's not dumb. He's not going to try to like hit on girls because he he's has a 90. very power. Well, besides that, he is in a very powerful position, man. Like so many people listen to him busted open. And he's yeah. a god for some. I mean, look at it, man. He is on fucking impact on AW, WWE. He's fucking fat head is everywhere. His shit is everywhere. People respect him. He's not gonna risk his lifelong dream for any chick. Completely honest. And he's the most loyal husband I ever seen. Like, you should you should go to his house and see how how he treats his wife, man. It's like the funniest and most cute thing ever. Oh. So uh he, he like I said he is a phenomenal, phenomenal human being. And not because he like put me on busted open, but because everything else that he's done through my career, and he's always, he's always that guy that you can call anytime and he'll listen. And he, he's, he always has this suggestions and you're like, just shut the fuck up. I don't want to hear that. I just don't want to hear that, you know, <laughs> but he's great. Um, so that's how, that's how everything unravel. And um, I'm really, I'm really thankful that I'm part of the Busted Open family. And honestly, doing Busted Open has gotten me out of a lot of dark moments in, in my life. And I know for like the Busted Open Nation, a lot of them have called and we and they say the same. They have gotten through divorce, through death, through like chemo, to like we, we got a phone call like that every single Friday. And Busted Open is so important as a community for so many people all over, not, not in the country, in the world. You know, because they all kind of talk to each other and it's it's pretty awesome. And we're the number sorry, we're the number one yep. in serious effect. XM. So Well, you know, I had an opportunity to meet you in person in Chicago and I was taken back a little bit because of how larger than life that you are. And you're you're not like, you know, six ten, but you 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 felt that tall, right? So do you feel that like the size in professional wrestling, is that a thing for wrestlers anymore? Do you feel like, you know, cause I see it now. It's like, it's almost as if it's like hockey, the smaller you are, it's almost the, the better you are. Um, well, I think like you were saying about, you know, changes in, in wrestling, like things have changed and switched it a little bit. I don't think like 20 years, 20, 25 years, if I would have been who I am right now, would have been the most successful wrestler. I am in a perfect time in where I can be myself and I'm accepted, right? 
And I think that it, that's what's happening more often. People are allowed to be themselves and, uh, and it's being accepted. I mean, if you have charisma and if you can wrestle and you have some showmanship, it's even way better. And I think for me, that's, that's had been the thing that I always wanted to set myself apart from, from the whole group. It has been not only here in, in wrestling, but it has been throughout my whole life. Because that's what's, but for me, that's like what sets you for success. Well, I know we're going to wrap this up here in a second. And uh, I definitely want to talk about the evolution of the Thunder Rosa character. And nowadays, sometimes it's hard to, when you get to a top spark spot to change anything you're doing because you're afraid of one single change may knock you back down the ladder. Uh, you know, when you think about how you're going to take that next step in your character development, what what goes through your mind? Are there anything, you know, kind of in, in the planes when you come back that you may change or elevate your character to do? Because you get a fresh gonna, set here. Uh, well, I am going to let you guys guess. What do you think I'm going to do next on that? Change the makeup to the other side of the face. I don't know yet. I'm still working on it, but I'm going to let you guess on that one because I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> Where do you draw the inspiration from? I mean, is it movies? Is it like comic books? Is it, you know, what is it? Uh, right now, honestly, like it's comic books. Um, I had, I had past tense, an opportunity to go to Triple Mania and because of the Wakanda Forever thing, and you know that we're celebrating, the, you know, the anti-hero. We wanted to do something very similar to that for our entrance because we know where it's going to be popular. And now it's it's being celebrated to be uh, a person of color, like in, in Mexico, looking the way that he looks, like Tinash looks, is you don't see that very often in in, in novelas and in, in everything. It, everybody's always very white and everybody's thought that white is be beautiful. It's and not. like, well, it, you know, and, and, and now it's being celebrated and I wanted to celebrate that part of, of me as, as a... Mexicana, the Aztec part, like the, the that we're fighters, that we're warriors, that we are, um, we can be heroes, right? And I didn't get to do it, so I'm like, darn it. Um, but um, definitely, I am. I take a lot of the inspiration on certain movies that I watch. Like, I mean, as you guys saw, like I've done some Kill Bill stuff. I done uh, Wolverine. I'm I'm into comic books. Uh, in and the Marvel and DC movies because they're very popular and they're very relatable to fans too. So even if they don't see your match, they saw your gear and they're like, oh, let me click. And they go on YouTube and they, they start seeing stuff and they start you get you start getting them involved in professional wrestling. So I really enjoy that. Um, I also um, find inspiration in music, you know, and, and like I'm like getting a lot more into Mexican regional music because of what it says and, and what it represents for me. And that's why you see me with a Tejana on. I'm like, I'm, I live in Texas. I am from the north in Tijuana. So like when you were at Tejana, you, you say there are two things. You have a rancher, you work really hard or, you know, you, you're like a boss of a boss, you know, when you're, you're like dressed up like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I find inspiration on everything. You got a new action figure coming out. Oh my God, it's so freaking awesome. I, you know, I saw it and I was like, that thing's sick. How excited do you get when you see something like that? I mean, give me an inside look. Cause I've never, I'm, I'm, you know, I've had custom action figures sent to me by fans, which is rad, mm -hmm. but it's also freaking weird. Right. Cause it's like, it's, it's, <laughs> it's because you're like, that doesn't, it, that kind of looks like me, but. It does and it doesn't, you know, right? So it's it's trippy. So, yeah. but when I saw this one that's coming out on Ringside Collectibles, and I looked at it and I was like, man, that like if if there was an action figure made of any wrestler, I would say this one is probably the perfect one. It is, and I'm also uh, giving you from... now. I'm giving you like a little little red carpet now to plug this action figure. You see how I did that, Thunder? Mm -hmm. well, Yes, I love it. And I want to give a shout out to uh, uh, Ringside Collectibles and the designer of this this uh, figure. He he like really likes me. I should tell you that because he's taking a he's taking a lot of care of making sure every detail counts. My hair, 
my my face pain, the head pieces. Uh, on the chase one, like the head piece, I was explaining to someone uh, how meticulous he was and how good it looks. He made me look amazing, like my face. I thought, you know, because some of, some of them, like their faces are so ugly. You're like, oh, yeah. that, that ain't her. I don't look like her. Uh, and he he's a Latino guy. And I remember when he first showed me the two figures, he told me that his, his goal was to really represent Latinos the way that he would have liked when he was little for Latinos to be represented in action figures. And he did that. And with this one, with the lights out, match uh, blood and gut special uh yeah at t two years later right um i feel really blessed that it, it's it's it was made because that's the match that you know set the bar for a lot of things in our division and that's never going to be taken away from me never no matter what happened no matter if i become a teacher later on of high school i'll tell my students like the time that i busted somebody open and they were bleeding and we were uh you know the main, the main attraction on, on a major show, or, or I become a corporate person. And I say this in story, like how that really opened doors for me. It's, it's already in place and it's, I'm an action figure. I'm not a Barbie. They're not making Barbies. They're making action figures where boys, girls, women, and men can play with. And, and it's, that's pretty rad. Like my cousins, my cousins, kids can play with my stuff. And, and it's like, I don't know, man. It's that's that's insane. That's insane. And I'm again. I'm super happy that the guys, the guys really like me. Wants <laughs> to make the toys. And again, this is my third figure. There's another figure coming, and then there's the figure that uh, the mariachi one. And I cannot wait for that one to come out. That that the the prototype looked pretty rad. Can I ask one more question, Large Fredrickson, where you can find them on the WhatNot app, selling all of his personal collectibles? Go over there, bookmark it, subscribe, so you can make sure you don't miss out on any Large Fredrickson personal stash that he has that he's putting up for sale. That's how you promote. Uh, Thunder, uh, uh, now that you're – you know, out there famous. I see you popping up everywhere. You're at basketball games. You're at, you know, you're doing baseball events. Can you, and this is just a fanboy question. Can you tell me the most famous person who's recognized you that you're like, holy cow, you know who I am other than Lars? Yo, I was going to say, well, yeah, I'm talking to Lars. He's like my <laughs> friends that, you know, listen to punk. They're like, bitch, you fucking got an interview by Lars. The fuck? You know, like, they're all jealous. Uh, man, I don't know. There's been um, so many. Who who was marking out for me, man? I don't know. I was I, I was in shock. Oh, David David Arquette. He I interviewed him on Busted Open, and he's like, "Bro, Thunder Rosa, I love you, man. I I follow your work." And I I was like, "What? Oh my god, the guy from I don't know who oh that is. Ter no, Terminator, who? the last Terminator, the Latino Patrick. Guy. Uh, no." No, no, no. Uh, Edward Furlow? For, no, that I don't know. That's where my Terminator movies stop. Um. Oh my God! I it, it was a, the the anti hero. He was a the guy that was chasing Terminator. Uh, well, he was a Terminator actually. Uh, he follows me. He follows me. He comments on my stuff, and I'm like, I texted him, and I was like, Yo, like, thank you. It's just pretty cool. You know, he knew who I was. He followed me before I followed him. You know, and I'm like, Wow, like. This is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I mean, all the wrestlers that are big time wrestlers, like Beth Phoenix, like she followed me. She knew who I was, and she acknowledged me as a, as a, as a you know a good wrestler before I became before I became famous. And I'm like, that was pretty. That was pretty cool. Like, you know, women like that that I I I, I look up to, and I'm like, fuck, like they really know who I am. That's. Yeah, Here's well, I mean, hold on my and especially if it's somebody like Beth Phoenix, who is is was an all star in her own right. She was, I would say, the most talented woman in that locker room for years. Um, you know, so coming from her and just being recognized, that's that's saying a lot about you. You know. Yeah, and like again, is that's that's all that I uh, I always wanted is the respect and recognition, and um, and I've I've had it for with many of my peers, males and females, uh, that have been, you know, they're veterans and it's, it's beautiful when you, you see, and then they tell you, uh, 
I will, like I told you, I'm going to continue to do that and I'm going to continue to have integrity in everything I do and, and, and just, like I said, rise above everything. Mm-hmm. Lars, you have any other questions? No, I only would have comments at this point. All right. Well, listen, uh, Thunder Rosa, AEW Women's Champion, uh, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us two guys. We are uh, thrilled and honored that you took time out of the night to hang out and talk with us. Thank you. Wednesday nights, AEW. And where can people find you online that you don't co- follow, uh, handle your own social media? So if you want something <laughs> well, to talk to you, your friend. At Thunder Rosa 22 on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I don't use my Twitter. That's the one that I don't use. That's the only one. Instagram. So oh, is- last question. Last question. Yes. yes. Are you gonna Are you gonna pay eight dollars to keep your blue check mark? Oh man, dude, we Just we're pissed no. about that. Oh, no, we're no. It's, I don't know. I'm 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 very pissed on what's happening on Twitter because it's more work that we have to do now because everybody can be me now because they have the blue check. Yeah. And it's dangerous. Like yesterday, uh, Ethan Page got hacked. It was yes, yeah, it was yesterday. And the stuff that is happening is it's it's pretty scary. It's pretty scary. Like we work very hard for for our brands, and then all of a sudden, it can be taken away because everybody can get a blue check. There's no checks and balances. I don't know, man. It's it's just uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Well. F- for everybody at home, the show's over. Go home, go watch another podcast or listen. We don't care. We're out now. We'll say our goodbyes off the air. Wrestling perspective, whatnot app. Go buy Lars's stuff. He needs to get rid of it. You need to go buy it. One of a kind stuff. I mean, uh, depending on when you watch this, what the twelfth, you're selling some pretty awesome stuff. Last week, you were selling a bunch of major action figures. I mean, come on, who doesn't want to yeah, buy I'm, Lars's stuff? I mean, I, I want to buy my stuff. But I just can't keep it anymore. I got too much stuff. And I've learned over time, just like as Thunder Thunder comes into this, you know, new enlightenment, this stuff isn't going to fix you. So, you know, I'm getting rid of it. And I wanted to go to your house. The stuff I'm keeping is pretty much behind me uh, in this shot. But other than that, um, I'm going to buy, I'm going to get, you know, I got the new Thunder Rosa action figure on the way as we speak. So that I'll be hoping you get it autographed. I think I might know a guy. Okay. His name is Dave LaGreca. All right. But, I just uh, yeah. to ask. I got I got a line the the Thunder. I can just say, hey, Thunder, would you do something for my buddy Lars? I know you don't know who he is, but well, you yeah, you send it I, send it to my house, I'll send it back. I'm taking her for tacos in a couple of days, so I'll just get it done then. <laughs> we we got a we got a taco eating contest to go to. All right. And, listen. And if, if you know if you know anybody that's looking for a judge, you know, <laughs> tell I got you, you know, girl. I got you. Taco. I'm I I'll be your representative. You know what I mean? Perfect. All taco inquiries, call yours truly. Please. Which isn't fair because now he's going to make me be his secretary. So technically I'm working for both you guys now. This sucks. Uh, the wrestling perspective, we're going home. Thank you, everybody. Thunder Rosa, thank you. You're very welcome, guys. Enjoy.